Good morning, Internet. I'm Pastor Goodman. This is the Largely Catechized Live, talking with you today about uh, prayer. Um, so far, we've said that we're commanded to pray, and that's usually, honestly, as far as most people get with it, that you got to pray, got to pray, got to pray all the time. And we don't really talk about how to do it, which makes the whole thing really uncomfortable, especially when you're the one that has to lead it. And everybody's staring at you and you maybe just want to eat. So, you know, how do you pray? We usually take kind of the lowest common denominator approach and just, you know, talking to God and, uh, you know, he, he talks to me too, but like, does he? What's he say? Is it, is it just what you wanted to hear all along? Because, well, then I'm not so sure that that was, that was, well, God. Um, we get called out on it, and we, we probably ought to. Jesus tries to help a little bit, but we have a hard time figuring out what he means. He says, you know, when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. But, well, then he teaches them an exact form to pray in the Lord's Prayer. When you pray, pray like this, our Father who art in heaven. When you pray, he says, go into your room and shut the door. But then he teaches the Lord's Prayer in a public place. Um... So, you know, when you pray, don't use fancy words, but sometimes fancy words. And when you pray, don't do it in public, but sometimes do it in public. It, this, this whole thing is awkward enough when you're talking to somebody who doesn't talk back to you before we can even figure out what we're supposed to say in the first place. It just gets to be terrible. And, and so prayer has looked like a lot of things to a lot of people from like an hour long chanted prayer in a monastery to the fake enthusiasm, just wanting to thank you God for all the, the sunshine today on the worst day of my life. Um, actually trying to be as thankful to God as you're trying to sound and on their own, both of these things wildly miss the mark because well because both of them are rooted in the fulfilling of the commandment without actually asking why gotta pray gotta pray but god calls us to pray that we might call upon him in every trouble pray praise and give thanks this is the meaning behind the second commandment you shall not misuse the name of the lord your god so why do you think he wants you to pray call upon him in every trouble Luther caught on to this. In the large catechism, he writes, babbling and bawling in the churches were no prayers for such external matters. When they are properly observed, may be a good exercise for young children, scholars, and simple persons, then may be called singing or reading, but not really praying. But praying, as the second commandment teaches, is to call upon God in every need. I'm not saying that any prayer in a church doesn't count. I'm saying that any prayer apart from need doesn't count. We don't throw up empty words, but words filled with need. And so the word help prayed in need is more beautiful than all of the monasteries singing, not because they need God, but because they're trying to impress him. We don't measure the outward form of the prayer, but the command to do it and the promise attached to it. And that actually, well, that is, is, is highlighted if the form is right. This is why we pray in certain ways. Our Father who art in heaven. God calls us to pray to him in need because he actually wants to be father to you. You see, the more the form attaches itself to our emotions or e even just our works or our thankfulness, the more problematic it becomes. The more the form attaches itself to um, a, a, a litany that you care nothing about, but are doing just for the sake of having done it, the more problematic it becomes. Prayer is simply this, calling upon God in need. So when you pray, pray like this, our Father who art in heaven. This form was given to direct you not just to God's command to pray, but also to your needs and even where God has already worked and is still working to fulfill them. Our Father who art in heaven, that's more than just talking to God. That's going to him with our need. And we don't even need to hear a voice back in response because these are God's own words which he's given us to use. We can go to our Heavenly Father with every need and find comfort in that very same Father who is at work to care for us here and now. The form of the prayer, it, it, if it's not going to show you what prayer is about, you're doing it wrong. Proper prayer is simply this, going to God in need.